Hello, everyone. I have been receiving these questions about some uh, aspects of assignment one, question two, that I consider are important for everyone. So I'm going to explain them briefly. Uh, this is uh, supposed to be a very short and dirty video, so I'm sorry there is not uh, a lot of addition on it, but it's supposed to be just uh, fast. When you have a impulse experiment, what you have at the entrance is a signal just like this one, and at the exit you will see something like this. The shape and height of this signal will depend on the flow inside your reactor and it will give you data about what's happening inside. When you want to take the average time, what you do basically is to take T and then E and then DT and then ET dt and this average time basically what we're doing here is called uh, a weighted average i want to explain a little bit more because some of you may not be familiar with the concept when we have a normal average the the usual average we usually take the the simple one what we have is a bunch of numbers let's say four five six if we add these numbers, we come to the conclusion this is equal to 15. And once we take that 15 and divide it between the number of uh, different numbers we have, which is 3, we get to 5. And 5 is the average for all these three numbers. This is easy. Everyone knows how to do this kind of average. But the problem becomes uh, evident when we have too many of these numbers. Let's say instead of having one four, one five, and one six, what happens when we have one hundred fours and maybe fifty fives and then uh, two hundred sixes? It's very, it's it's not practical to say I'm going to sum four plus four plus four plus four plus four a hundred times and then five plus five plus five fifty times and so on. So what we do here is we take what is usually called a weighted average, where we are going to make this multiplication. And we are going to multiply each number for the number of times it's repeated, and then sum or, or add this to the rest of the same operation. And when we take the, 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 the division, when we make this operation, it won't be between three. We won't divide uh, without against three because there are not three numbers. What we usually do is we take the sum of all the different amount of numbers there are. So this is a weighted average. This is how we usually do it done, and, and you can now probably understand way better what I was talking about. If you see this formula you will find it's uh, it's exactly the same of what we have here. Uh, for starters, every integral, it's basically a sum, which accounts for the summation, both in the denominator and the numerator of this uh, expression. And what we're trying, what we're trying to average in this case is the time, which exists here as these numbers, let's say, and then we use the concentration of reference, which is would be equivalent to this example to the number of times. And in the bottom of this expression, what we have is this amount again, just like this one. So what we are doing instead of taking the average of the concentration, taking the times of reference, where we would say, and this is very logical to think about, oh, this 
concentration happening this time and this time and this time and this time. So the average concentration for the time is this. We are taking the opposite. We are saying this time happening at this concentration, this time happening at this concentration, and so on. So we are taking the average of time. I know it sounds weird, but mathematically it makes sense. As you can see, this is the same formula, and this is a weighted average. That's how it's called. So this is explanation on how we can interpret, or at least uh, understand, this formula that everyone saw in the Fogler text, and I believe it's also in the In the eleventh spiel text, I'm sorry. What's the problem with uh, this formula? The problem is that when we have a step experiment, this step experiment will give us a different response. In this case, the response is going to be, let's say, we have a PFR, something like this. So again, we want to take the area under the curve. But we have a problem, this curve is infinite. When do we stop taking the area under the curve? Now you realize this is a problem, right? One could say, hey, wait, let's finish exactly when this value becomes the cocktail concentration, the amount of tracer injected. But the reality, especially when we're talking about real reactors, is that sometimes we inject an amount of tracer and due to some accumulation, due to that, that so on, stuff like that, instead of getting the maximum that we were expecting, what we obtain is something less. So it's not reliable to say, okay, I'm going to stop my integration as soon as this thing reaches the maximum because we may not reach it. So something we can do to come around this problem is to, instead of going through this, and what I'm going to say, it, it applies to, to a CSTR, which would have this shape. It doesn't matter, it's the same. What we are going to do is uh, flip the axis. So instead of having T and E, what we are going to do is to put T and E in this way. So this shape will change and it will become this. What did I win by doing this? Now I can take the area under the curve and it doesn't matter how long time I take, even if this goes to, let's say, infinite, the area under the curve will, won't be affected by the amount of time. And with this little trick, we can easily calculate the area under the curve. In this case, what we are going to do is to take Sorry, this is an integral time, but in this case, with differentials of concentration at the exit against concentration at the exit. And this is not exactly a weighted average. This is more close to a normal average, but it's the same principle. What we are doing here is taking all the times and multiply them by all the little concentrations, all the change in concentration that we know, and divide them by the times of concentration, and we're taking the average of the time. As every formula with integrals, this can be rewrite as, sorry, fractions or increments of concentration. And in this way, you can work with points of data, which is what you should do for assignment one, problem two. I hope this clarifies some ideas. I hope uh, not to be confusing you a little bit more. 
If you have any question, just uh, let me know, and I'll try to help you with them. Bye-bye.